So now in this video we're going to look at a shot key dial, but this is a different one than we used in a recent video. So that could only handle about 15 milliamps of current. I was surprised how low it was, but that is what the uh, data sheet uh, said. The part number for this is 15SQ045. And uh, 15 of that part number is important for knowing about the component. That is the current that can flow through this shot key dial when it is forward biased. So you think that side more positive, that side more negative, it will uh, allow up to about 15 amps of current to flow through it before it starts getting uh, too hot. And uh, so that's a maximum though. We probably want to stay like half, way below that uh, most of the time. That's usually the way it goes with uh, max values. So 045, that is the voltage that it blocks well reversed by. So again, we got cathode there, anode there. If you don't want it to conduct, you make that side more positive, that side more negative and uh, it should stop current flowing through up to 45 volts. Now, this is a shot key diode, so even uh, with that current, if you look at the size of the component here, you would think it could uh, block a lot more than uh, 45 volts, maybe even 1,000 volts. I'm not sure how big a regular rectifier diode is that can block 1,000 volts, but uh, usually if they're this big, they can block a lot of voltage. Uh, the shot key diode can't block as much voltage. Its benefit is, when it's forward biased, that side more positive, that side more negative, current is flowing easily, it only drops about 3.3 volts, I mean, not 3 volts, 0.3 volts, compared to a uh, rectifier diode that's just made out of silicon, will uh, probably, at this amount of current that we're going to use in the circuit, probably close to 0 0.7 volts. So, uh, probably less voltage we're going to lose, thanks to the shot key diode versus a rectifier down. Now I uh, bent them into the terminal block um, because if I want to use these for a breadboard circuit, the uh, wire that's on there with solid wire is uh, too big right there. So in comparison to this, I have this uh, ferrule connector right there. The wire is 16 gauge. It looks like it's a little bit thinner than uh, what that is and it's stranded. So it would handle less current. I, I think I'd probably do a maximum of uh, five amps of current through this particular wire. But in any case, there you can see that uh, it, uh, you know, it's about flat right there. So I can plug this all the way in with just a ferrule connector. But uh, there you can see with the wire there, this goes down a bit right there. Uh, most of uh, what wire we got uh, remaining there. So uh, you can probably see how I folded it in there. I also uh, bent it up in uh, that direction so that it uh, can be over the breadboard. Otherwise, if you just kept it straight, you can just stick the terminal block on the edge there and let the diode stick over the edge. That is another possibility. But in any case, we got five volts at the supply. I'm gonna turn the power on. And depending on how well uh, everything is connecting, each one of these connectors has a tiny bit of resistance. As current goes up, it uh, starts dropping more and more of the voltage. But we got the power supply set to five volts. As we saw, a little more than 200 milliamps of current. I have other circuitry up here for an upcoming project, but I don't think it's drawing any current at this moment. And uh, so there you can see, out of that five volts we're dropping, uh, we're down to about uh, 4.8 volts total. So we got a little voltage being dropped along the resistance. But uh, when it comes to the light here, this uh, shot key diode is dropping about 0.28 volts. So that is at the uh, current that we have here, about 220 milliamps current. But I think as current goes up, I don't think it's gonna go up uh, rapidly, but the data sheet for this component, it, it doesn't even show uh, low current uh, forward voltage. All it says is like about 0.5 volts, half of a volt. So I think that's when you're getting close to 15 amps. I think that's the only number they're giving you. But in case that voltage is being dropped across the, uh, the light here. The light has less of that supply voltage thanks to the shot key diode. That is why you use shot key diodes if just a regular uh, silicon diode will drop uh, too much voltage, a regular silicon rectifier diode. That's when you use the shot key when you want it to drop less voltage while it's forward biased. Um, let's make sure we turn the meter off before we move to the next part. So now I decided to make another one like this, but have it so it will face the other way when it is uh, up like that. So I'm gonna put the cathodes on opposite side. When I'm done with this, uh, both of these are gonna go into the baggie and probably uh, one or two of these uh, terminal blocks right there. So to begin with, we just uh, 
you know, if the part number is important, then, you know, you could, uh, let's do that. Let's uh, make it so we show the part number. I'm not going to try to make this perfect. But in any case, first, I just uh, bent the wires that way right there with uh, the pliers. And you want to go, you know, farther than you need to go. Pretty uh, straightforward right there. And that's because we need to make a second bend. So we want them to come back towards each other there by quite a bit. And then at some point, we have to decide on a decision where, so we bent it that way. Now we're gonna bend it the other way, right that. So I'm gonna bend it like that, and then do the same thing with this one right here. So I'm looking through the camera while I do this. I'm not getting as good of an alignment as I would like, but uh, there we go. So bend that way, and then uh, come to some midway point, and then bend it uh, the other way. And then they become, you know, fairly parallel. So not beautiful, but again, I'm uh, doing that through the camera. So as I said before, I want this one facing the other way. So you can see that, but uh, there we go. It's going up. And uh, so we uh, just bend them up now. It's facing the other way. So if they're up like that, then when I insert it into the uh, terminal block, again, this isn't gonna be uh, beautiful. That one's up a little bit. This wire isn't that terribly hard. I can do it by hand uh, quite a bit. But there you can see. So that's up there now. And uh, cathodes are on the other side. So I could uh, unscrew this, pull these out. These slide in and out really easy. There's plenty of space right there once the uh, screws are way up. Um, but I could swap that one and screw this one down if I want it facing uh, the side of the board, left or right, uh, the same way but I want it to be in opposite directions right there. So in any case, um, that's really about it. As I said before, I'll throw those in a baggie. That's how I store things. I have a uh, kind of a baggie kit, different size baggies right there that I can throw different uh, parts uh, into depending on how many there are, how large they are and stuff. So I recommend that. But otherwise, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.